Hello my friends, welcome back to the final campaign unit tier list. This is going to be for Nova Covert Ops, and if you know this campaign, you know that things are going to be a little bit different this time. This is because the way that units and upgrades work in this is that there are a set number of modules, there's 11 of them, and then there's a set number of units, there's like 9? I think it's 9. And every unit can be given different modules, and for the duration of the mission, all the units of that type get a bonus based on what module you give them, but you can't give every module to every unit. <laughs> and they drastically change the power of the unit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over what the unit does on its own, and then we're going to go module by module and rate the tiers, because you never use a unit without a module ever. It's just how the campaign goes. So let's start with the Marine. The Marine is, well, the Marine. It does the exact same thing as it does in every other version of the game. It's really, really good. And it gets four different upgrades. The first one is Laser Sights, which gives it plus two vision range and plus one attack range. I am going to put this nice in A tier. You have the Marine, but it has more range. That's really good. And vision is really underrated by people. Plus two vision range makes it much easier to either uh, scan targets, not with like scan or sweep, but just identify what targets are where and make better decisions and not get caught off guard as easily. Vision is really good. It's like criminally underrated. However, you don't start out with the stim pack ability with this version of the Marine. So you are getting the bonus range, but you don't have stim. If you want stim, you can get the super stim upgrade. Super Stim is an autocast stim ability that gives the attack speed and the movement speed. However, when it autocasts, it heals you instead of dealing damage. Super Stim on the Marine is S tier. It is absurdly S tier. It is ridiculous. It is the best combo in the game, and it's available really soon after you start. Marines that heal themselves. You, it's, it is Marine Medic on its own and you don't have to spend any gas. The real power with this is that you don't have to like put it in a composition. Anything works with it. You don't need to go like Marine Marauder Medic. Yeah, just if you have extra minerals, throw out some Marines with Super Stim. It's gonna work no matter what you're going. They're great. The third upgrade is Mag Rail Munitions. Every 30 seconds, the Marine has an autocast ability that will fire a blast that deals 10 damage to the closest enemy target. This ability is obviously a ton of initial burst damage in fights. It mows down the front line of enemies. However, it does have a problem where the autocast tends to overkill stuff a ton, which means that you'll have a bunch like shoot a Zergling. If you can have them all shoot like ultras and stuff, it's great. Uh, but sometimes the AI is a little bit dumb. However, because it's so massable, I'm still putting it in A tier. The thing about the Marine is even an average ability is an insane on it because it's so cheap, right? You get so many mag rail munitions out if you want it, and it ignores armor and stuff like that. It's awesome. Then the final one is improved logistics. I don't remember how uh, the way that the improved logistics upgrade works is it makes whatever units it's equipped to train significantly faster. I don't remember what any of the times are, the actual numbers on them, but Improved Logistics is kind of the upgrade that you put on a unit when all the other modules are on other units. Uh, I'm going to put it in B tier. It's not great. Like, instead of building two racks, maybe you build one. It's a way to emergency get a couple marines out. However, all my tier lists are based on the brutal difficulty. And a couple marines without the laser targeting or super stim or mag rail are almost never going to be the emergency safe button that you need. Overall, the Marine is incredible, and the first three of its abilities are all great to add to the arsenal. The second unit you unlock is the Reaper. The Reaper has, once again, that plus one range, plus two vision upgrade. Uh, however, it is got a problem. The Reaper is the Reaper. It is 50 gas, 50 minerals, and very, very squishy. Its range is not very good, even with the bonus range, it still is going to end up in the front, and it dies a lot. It does have the built-in jump jet ability, which is okay. However, 
I think the two unit is too expensive to be good. So if you give it plus one range and plus two vision, I think it's still going to be C tier. Now, Super Stim, once again, Super Stim is going to be on all the biological units, and then in the later half, it will not be there. Super Stim is, it's still free healing, it's attack speed, it's movement speed. It can actually make the Reaper a little bit too fast. Super Stim will activate, and because the Reaper is already very swift, it will zoom in front of your army, which can be a liability. However, it still is Super Stim, so it gives a B. It gives a little bit of durability, and maybe it can get some more shots off before the Reaper dies. The third one is kind of spicy. The Spider Mine ability. Reapers get three charges of Spider Mines that they can drop onto the ground. Spider Mines are Spider Mines. They're pretty good. Big problem is they cost gas, which is... Uh, mm, I, well, the mines themselves don't cost gas. But it's 50 gas for three Spider Mines. It's not the greatest trade. I think that, once again, it is B tier. One of the better upgrades for the Reaper, but nothing special. A very cool upgrade that the Reaper has is Cloak. In the later half of the campaign, you can get this cloaking module. In fact, it's not the later half. I think it's mission four. And all your Reapers come out permanently cloaked. The problem that is actually going to be a theme with a lot of Cloak and Nova Covert Ops is that it is Nova Covert Ops. And Nova Covert Ops is based around Nova, who is cloaked, which means that the enemy gets a bunch of detection. It just has detection everywhere. And that actually makes Cloak worse for a lot of units like the Reaper. And the Reaper has to get in very, very close to actually deliver its attacks. So Cloak is cool. You can definitely do some great defensive stuff with it, make it very hard for the enemy to engage you with permanently cloaked guys. You can harass. There's probably some cheeses you can do. So I'm going to give it B tier. However, it is very difficult to attack with it, which is why, man, if the detection wasn't as good, permanently cloaked Reapers would be absurdly powerful. They're kept in check, though. And the third is Special Ordnance. The Special Ordnance upgrade is different for every single unit that gets it. On the Reaper, it gives it the KD-8 charge, which is their anti-structure attack. The Reaper should have the KD-8 anti-structure attack by default like it does in Wings of Liberty. That upgrade isn't even that good. It's... It's a shame. I And you only get it in the later stages of the campaign, too. I'm putting it in D tier because they're simply... Yeah, when I say the later stages, I mean that you get it for the final two missions of the campaign. And one of the two missions doesn't have enemy structures. That is how bad getting the anti-structure attack is on the Reaper. It literally one mission that it can be used for, and it's the final mission where killing structures is, an, is part of it, but it, it's not nearly as important as fighting the Xanthos. The Reaper just... It's... It's too expensive for what you buy, and too fragile. A unit that is a lot more bulky is the Marauder. Once again, laser targeting. Laser targeting is pretty nice. I actually like it on the Marauder. You end up a lot of the time with super stim on your Marines. So if you're going for a biological based composition, then throwing that vision range and attack range on the Marauders is not bad. They're often going to naturally be behind the faster super stimmed Marines with, slow, with lower range. So giving them even more range so they can start firing once they catch up is pretty okay. Nice little B tier. They have Super Stim themselves if you're looking for a more durable frontline unit. It has a bigger heal than the Marine's heal. It gives the same attack and movement speed bonus. This creates a very, very robust army and gets a nice A tier. Very strong. The third upgrade is Internalized Tech Module, which removes the need for a tech lab. This is, uh, it's okay. It's not bad, but it's not, like, great. It means, I don't know. I've played around with it a good bit to try to make, like, only reactor bio stuff work. It's, it's really, it's not the end of the world to have to build the tech labs in this campaign. Especially on the barracks. Uh, I don't, I think it is the worst one by far simply because you are giving up some actual powerful abilities to get it. It's kind of like the improved logistics where you decrease the build time. It is one of the ones you go for when the other ones aren't. 
they're they're busy on someone else. And then they have mag rail munitions just like the Marine does. This one does twice as much damage. The Marauder is slightly more than twice expen as expensive. It is a solid B. Nothing to write home about. Unfortunately, the overkill problem with shooting a bunch of like Zerglings or something like that and overkilling them is exacerbated when you do twice as much damage with half the shots. It's all right though. It's still a big volley at the very beginning of a fight. The next unit is a siege tank and it has five different upgrades. The first is internalized tech module. Uh, it's once again, it's all right. Like being able to react or out some siege tanks is fine. Uh, it's just not right worth writing home about and it's not really worth the upgrade slot. One that I think is really good and plays into the defensive strengths of the siege tank already is the spider mine. You are building siege tanks for defense almost always, which means that being able to throw out groups of three spider mines is phenomenal. And oh gosh, they can rebuild, right? I'm like 99% sure. One sec, let me check. Uh, oh no, am I going to mess everything up? Uh, sorry, all of these are different, and I get, sometimes when you are playing the campaign versus co-op versus stuff, it can be, I'm pretty sure that the Siege Tank has the ability to buy the Spider Mines, and they come out in a group of three, which is very, very good, and they actually fire at a pretty long range. 5.5 range means that you can set them up when you need in a good position away from the tanks and provide that nice little blast barrier for you. It's an A tier. Well, one of my favorite abilities is the jump jet. It adds a little jet pack to the siege tank. There's an activated ability and it f jumps to the location that you click. The way that they showcase this is like jumping up onto a high ground position in order to shell things. You almost never want to do that because the enemy almost always has air spotters. There's a lot of air in this campaign and then you're stuck up there. But one thing that's really good is having some tanks in a line and then jump jetting back as if you have blink stalkers almost. And then you can make like little progress forward or if the opponent is, they get a unit in a weird position and your tank can't hit it, you can just jump jet over to hit it instead of having to unsiege, move over, resiege, etc, etc. It adds some very nice flexibility to the unit. It's not powerful per se, but it is a good to have. So it gets a pretty solid B tier. Transformation Servos is another one that is just a good utility ability. It decreases the time it takes to siege and unsiege by four times. It means that you very rapidly can set up and undeploy the siege tank wherever you need. It's tough to get caught off guard with it. Uh, in, in theory, you shouldn't need it if you play perfectly, but nobody is perfect and it does come up and makes the siege tank a easier to use aggressive unit as a result of being able to deploy quicker. So it gets B tier. And then the final one is regenerative bio steel. One of the most busted abilities in Nova Covert Ops, I know. If you only play Wings of Liberty and you hear regenerative bio steel busted, what is this kooky world? Yeah, if you're out of combat for a couple of seconds, you start regenerating HP at 10 HP per second. This is so good. Every unit that has it is blessed. And when you are a defensive unit and you're taking damage in waves, you don't need to be repaired or anything anymore. Like, you'll take some splash damage in a fight or whatever, and then you'll be spick and span ready to go without having to actually invest anything. A tier. Oh. I messed up. Sorry, I went two slides forward. <laughs> the Hellion is a unit. It kind of sucks. It does have the ability to turn into the Hellbat, which is actually pretty nice. The Hellbat is like the Hellion, but it's really slow, so it doesn't run in front of your expensive mech army. The other thing that's nice about the Hellbat is it has a super stim ability. Because Hellbats are biological, they can get that stim pack, which heals them up, helps your front line, and it's it's okay. Unfortunately, the Hellion does not get the stim pack ability. So, which is sad because then you could have your race car go really fast. It's going to be B tier. The problem is that the Hellion itself is not great, so even when it has a good upgrade, it's just a very mediocre upgrade at best. 
Smart servos is the ability to transform four times as fast. On the Hellion, when you're really, you're not dynamically, like the siege tank, if you are attacking with tanks, you might want to unsiege and resiege multiple times during a game. Almost always with the Hellbat, you make a Hellion and transform it once. C tier, it just doesn't do much. Then comes the jump jet ability. The active jump jet ability on the siege tank is not what you get on the Hellion and Hellbat. Instead, the Hellbat gets the ability to jump towards their target, like the Raptor Zergling. The problem is that all this does is make your Hellbat die faster. It's horrible. It's, <laughs> it's really, really bad. I actually believe that it actively makes the Hellbat worse, in my experience. Because you almost always want them to be covering for your other mech units, almost standing there as a bulwark. They are not a good pushing unit, and this makes them even worse at it. D tier. Also, I don't think that it lets them jump off cliffs, which is lame. I mean, it's not that useful to be able to do it, but give them something. And then Special Ordinance is the final one. That is the bonus. It gives you Infernal Preigniter, which is the plus 10 bonus versus light units. The same problem applies to basically every upgrade in StarCraft campaigns that does bonus to light units. The light units are almost never the problem. It's the armored units that are really getting you. Plus, there's already an upgrade that gives you increased attack speed with Super Stim. So... Why are you going to take the attack damage one against a specific type when you could get the attack speed that works on everybody and it heals you? D tier. It's garbage. Unfortunately, the Hellion and Hellbat... I think that even if you're playing mech, you would prefer to have marines, probably with mag rail munitions, because then the blast that they fire ignores armor, so you don't need the attack upgrades. I think the marine is better for mech as a mineral dump. That is how bad the Hellion and Hellbat is in Nova Covert Ops. A good mech unit is the Goliath. I know that I rated the Goliath pretty poorly in Wings of Liberty, and I had a lot of people give me some flack about that. I don't think it's great in Wings. I think it's awesome in Nova Covert Ops. It can do some pretty good stuff. This is because the enemy attacks with a lot of Protoss, and it turns out that having anti-armored, anti-flying missiles is really good against the faction that has armored flyers. Who would have thought? In fact, a lot of the later stages of the campaign are big sky toss and big Terran with like battlecruiser energy. And that is right up the Goliath's alley. So it has the laser sights upgrade. This is the, oh, uh, one thing about the Goliath, it starts by default with the ability to attack ground and air. You do not have to buy that upgrade which is amazing. That is a huge plus because in Wings Liberty, that is expensive. And that is one of the reasons it's good. The other upgrade in Wings Liberty is plus one range against ground and plus three range against air. That is exactly what this first upgrade is. And I'm going to put it in A tier. Really, really long range anti-armored stuff is strong in this campaign. It is. And being a, it's, it's just nice. Advanced Logistics, the ability to rapidly produce a bunch of them, is going to be C tier because, once again, it's just a uh, who cares. But the problem is the Goliath, if you are playing mech, is going to be basically the core of your composition. You want a bunch of them walking around and doing stuff. And that means that in order to do that, you are giving up the ability to have these range upgrades or the upgrades we're going to talk about later in exchange for faster build time, and that is not good. And it doesn't help you, like, go with a, oh, I'm going bio, but I want a couple Goliaths, because you don't with improved logistics, because they don't have the bonus range. So they get stuck with the rest of your army instead of being behind hitting the air. So it's, uh, it's not a great position for the Goliath to be in if you get advanced logistics. The next ability is Jump Jet. This one gives the Goliath cliff walking, the ability to jump up and down cliffs like the Reaper does. The problem is that the campaign does not a great job at actually giving you a whole lot of cliffs to jump up and down that have like any value. There are cliffs, but they're not really strategic cliffs for a lot of Goliaths. 
I've tried to find the places, and overall I've been unimpressed. So, C tier, just because of map design. And then the final upgrade is Regenerative Biosteel. Once again, that uh, get out of combat, start regenerating a lot. The Goliath here, because you are going to have so many of them as the core of your mech composition, I give it A tier. The more you have, the better Biosteel is. And I believe this is the cheapest unit that gets the ability. Next up is the Banshee. It has the ability to shoot rockets, cloak, and fly, just like normal. First ability is uh, the No Tech Lab ability. Who cares? B, whatever. Second ability is the Advanced Cloaking Doohickey, which is, I, th I guess it's the second time we saw it. It was first on the Reaper. It gives permanent cloaking to the Banshee. It's, it's pretty, it's solid. I mean, the Banshee can spend a lot of its time cloaked anyway, but not having to manage that aspect of it is nice. It means you can move from attack to defense very fluidly. Banshee is all an all right unit already, so that's pretty cool. Unfortunately, it's got Biosteel, which means that Biosteel is the better option. Biosteel, incredible, A tier, as always. You're never gonna see Biosteel low. And then finally is Advanced Ordnance. That unlocks the Shockwave Missile Batteries upgrade, which means the Banshee rockets do damage in a line. Uh, I think it's okay, it's B tier. The problem is that in the later stages of the campaign, there are not a whole lot of small targets that you want to be shockwaving. It's more groups of more elite units. A lot of Taldorim stuff coming. There are some troopers in the final mission that could theoretically be taken down by that, but for the most part, the siege tanks you start with are enough for that, so I'm not convinced that it is necessary. And you only get that special ordinance late into the campaign. I guess it's really the mid-stage. All right, we have three more units to go. Let's do this. I don't want to have another Legacy of the Void length video, so we're kind of blitzing through them. The Liberator. Liberator is the flying siege tank type unit. It fires, you deploy it, it sets up a zone. They can shoot into any, any zones of any Liberators that are nearby. This Liberator does not do the infinity damage that they do in... StarCraft II multiplayer, they do 35 per shot, which is dramatically lower, and that is because the AI is an idiot and does not know how to dodge these zones. When you have a bunch of deployed Liberators, the AI cannot deal with them still. Very strong, and then when they're in fighter mode, they can move around very quickly and have a very nice area of effect anti-flyer attack. All in all, it is very mobile and can set up defensive positions, which is great. First one, first upgrade is improved logistics though, and uh, it's going to be B tier, not because it's better here or anything, but because the Liberator is just a really good unit. So if you're going to give it that upgrade, it's still going to be a good unit. The second upgrade that it gets is Cloak. The Liberator already great at securing a position. It is so hard. The AI just doesn't have the tools to properly bust a bunch of cloaked Liberators that are set up. So it gets A tier, very strong. Only reason it's not like S tier or something is getting those Liberators is very expensive and slow. So you can't do it all the time. But Cloaked Liberators are great. Oh, I forgot to mention, by the way, these Liberators can hit buildings. Even They do drastically less damage, but they can hit buildings, which is, that's quite nice. Transformation Servos is the next one, transform and untransform faster. B tier, because the Liberator is B tier. And that's not a good enough upgrade to get you into an A. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry, I saw the letter A, and then I was like, it's time to go. <laughs> Final one, once again, Biosteel. If you were setting up a siege position like that, you are going to take that chip damage once again, and then probably not die, probably heal up to full A tier, because it, it's just, Biosteel is busted, man. It's so good. It's so good. I love it. Two more units. Let's do the Raven. The Raven is a very different unit than, it's not very different, but the Raven has gone through a lot of different changes throughout StarCraft's history, so I should explain what all of its abilities are. First, it has that standard auto turret. You drop it, it does the damage of like an unupgraded Marine without stim. It's a structure, it takes two by two, so it's kind of unwieldy to drop the auto turrets. They're all right, they last for three minutes, and then they explode. 
Uh, the next ability is Biomechanical Repair Drone, which you just toss it down and it repairs your nearby stuff. It's pretty decent. They can't stack up or anything like that, but they provide a little bit of healing over time. They cost energy. And then the third ability is Seeker Missile. It fires a Seeker Missile. It explodes, deals damage to anything in the area. You target a unit, it follows it around until that unit dies because the enemy cannot dodge. So we have four different abilities on the Raven. Raven is pretty solid overall. It requires a Tech Lab Starport, but it is a nice utility caster to just have in your army. So it is going to be fairly well rated for the most part. First one is Magrail Munitions. It takes the auto turret and it makes it do damage in a line. This is not bad. It's all right. It's not anything that's like world breaking, but it gives the Raven a lot, a decent amount of you just plop them down as a front line. It's actually pretty good in mech compositions if you have the gas for it, because you can set these down as a frontline tank and they do a pretty good job. And then they protect the rest of your forces. I'm not opposed to it. It gets B tier. The next is Spider Mines. It drops three Spider Mines for 50 energy. The Spider Mines are permanent. They're not a time to life unit. This ability is insane. It basically, once you have enough Ravens, you can drop infinity spider mines and your opponent will never be able to hit you with a ground unit again. The only reason this is an S tier, once again, is because it's very slow to set up and I guess it doesn't help against any air stuff, but yeah, if you don't want to ever deal with ground units, spider mines on a Raven is insane. Uh, the internal tech module, uh, you can't really afford to build reactored ravens for the most part anyway. So I, maybe you can if you're going like real heavy into the raven stuff, but if you're going real heavy into raven, it's almost always for the abilities. So you should probably be buffing one of the abilities or getting the spider mines. I don't like it. I think that it is C tier. And then is the special ordinance. This gives the Raven an auto attack. And that auto attack is a long cooldown Seeker missile for free. I know what you might be thinking. You might be going, oh, Grant, I've never played this campaign before, but I'm pressing that pre order button right now. That sounds so good. I'd say hold off. Hold off just a little bit on that, partner. Because this ability sucks. This ability is so bad. Do you know what's really, 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 really bad? Putting an area of effect damage attack as an auto attack on your units that damages your own stuff. Imagine just, you know, living your own day. Do, 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 do. You're going home. You're going to go macro or something like that. You're just having a good time. You have your big old army. And then you hear, your forces are under attack, and you're like, oh, it's just seven Zerglings, that's fine. And then you look back, and your Ravens fired Seeker missiles that then proceeded to follow the Zerglings into your army and kill half of it. This ability is hilarious. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's awful. <laughs> D tier. It makes the Raven worse. It makes the unit such a liability against so many enemies, I cannot in good conscience, in good conscience, ever advise that you get it. But it is, unless you're looking for a good party with some fireworks and you don't care whose fireworks they are, you're, you or your opponent. <laughs> One unit left, let's get to the battle cruiser. The battle cruiser, oh, it's so good. So this is effectively the ladder battle cruiser, except for one difference. It does not have the ability to move while firing. It does have the global range teleport though that costs no resource and it has Yamato gun. The battle cruiser is only available in the final two missions. And if you never build any unit besides those in the final two missions, you will be fine because the battle cruiser is awesome. So it's got a couple upgrades. The first is internal tech module. You get a B. You can't really, it, once it, it's one of those units like the Raven where you can't reactor out too many battle cruisers. So you, it's okay to build the tech lab. 
you're not saving that much money with it. But the battle cruiser is still going to be B at minimum. It is a strong unit. The next upgrade is cloak. You get an energy bar and you get the ability to cloak. In theory, this is so busted. The problem is that, as I said, you only get the battle cruiser in the final two missions. And in the first of those two missions, the enemy sends infinity observers. Anytime that you build an observer, or anytime that you kill an observer, it gets almost instantly rebuilt and comes down the lane or it comes to the lane again. So it uh you don't get much done, and the I believe that Janara is a detector, which means that the boss fights in that second to last mission can see you no matter what. And then the battle cruiser exists in the final mission, which is just littered with detection. It is the most heavy detected mission in the game. And um okay. Who cares? Like it's you're not gonna be able to get the detection you're not gonna be able to get the cloak to get much value in either of those missions anyway. It is a good defensive tool. It means the battle cruiser won't be hit as it's defending, but sometimes I actually think it's correct to get your battle cruisers hit because they're so chonky. They're as strong as buildings. Well, not quite. Well, they're as strong as supply depots. <laughs> the durability is great, basically. So, um, yeah, I'm going to give it B tier. Once again, it has its uses. It's really cool, but unfortunately, due to the mission designs that it is available on, you cannot get the true value. Oh, and of course, the Xanthos at the very end of the mission is a detector. So in those final boss fights where you're going to be using your battle cruisers, doesn't matter. It won't do anything. Though if you do use that bug to get the Xan or to get a battle cruiser into the Xanthos at the very end, I don't think that Davis is a detector. So <laughs> you get that bonus going for you. Next up is the Special Ordnance. This replaces the attacks of the Battlecruiser with an ATX battery. This decreases their single target DPS by a pretty significant margin, but allows them to hit up to five targets at the same time. This means that the Battlecruiser now does much higher damage against groups, however, it reduces its effectiveness against single targets. I prefer the single target damage with the Battlecruiser, dealing with things like the Xanthos, for example. However, there is definitely an argument to be made that it is fine. There, if you want it to be a anti-area big laser craft, then that is, it is a good upgrade to do that. My big problem is that I wish it made the battlecruiser fire while moving. Then it would be an upgrade worth getting. However, right now it is kind of a side grade for the battlecruiser. So I'm going to put it at the same tier as I would put the rest of the basically base battle cruisers, in that you know it's just changing the role instead of making it objectively better and then the final upgrade for the final unit is regenerative bio steel a tier it's insane on the battle cruiser because it's so hard to lose one and it will fully heal that bad boy up in under a minute and then the battle cruiser has the tactical jump ability which means that if you have a low hp bc you can very easily jump it into your main base. It, it cannot die during this process, and then it's fully healed. It basically means that if microed properly, you will never lose a BC with this ability. And that makes it very easy to cascade out of control. So it's super, super strong. All right, guys, that is my Nova Covert Ops tier list in under 35 minutes. Absolutely incredible stuff. This is going to be the end of the tier list series because tomorrow we have the beginning of... No, no, uh, I was about to name the wrong series. We have the beginning of Legacy of the Meme starting this time slot. I am really super duper excited for it. And I hope you guys are too. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you tomorrow. Peace.